Welcome everybody to this audio segment of Suddenly. Well, today I just want to speak out of Psalm 64. And, you know, we live in, a, in an age of, uh, right now, of a lot of, uh, a lot of information out there, things that are going wrong. <laughs> and, um, you know, a lot of people right now feel that their, their life is, a, is in a life of hopelessness because of everything that is surrounding them, the adversities that they are going through, the challenges in life itself, uh, especially with finances and all these things. But I want to encourage you that there's going to be a suddenly that's going to come for you and that God has a plan. We always need to remember that God always wants to always reveal His will and His plan for your life. So let me just start in Psalm 64. This is written by David. And it goes, Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Guard and preserve my life from the terror of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel and conspiracy of the ungodly, from the scheming of evildoers, who wit their tongue like a sword, who aim venomous words like arrows, who shoot from ambush at the blameless man. Suddenly they, they shoot at him without self-reproach or fear. They encourage themselves in an evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will discover us? They think out of acts of injustice and say, we have accomplished a well-devised thing. For the inward thought of each one is unsearchable and his heart is deep. All right, I want to stop right there. You know, uh, we are living in a time where people feel that their security is being threatened, you know, and I'm not just talking about something like 9-11, but the security of their finances, the security of their home, and uh, it seems, you know, like uh, as we are finding out, there are many, there have been many conspiracies or closed door secret meetings when it came to the finances and the downfall of the financial institutions. And because of greed and, and because of power that people desired and, and they pretty much just uh, took advantage of a lot of people. And thus is what we're facing that many are facing foreclosures for their homes and, and are living in a place of hopelessness and, and frustration and stress and, and uh, you know just overwhelmed with depression and, and many are being you know taking medication to help uh, alleviate that uh, being oppressed and being depressed uh, by taking different medications you know and, and so um, we're finding too that you know uh, uh, the loss of jobs as well and many are unemployed and uh, I know what that is you know I've, uh, I've been unemployed for a while myself but you know I know who my source is and that's God but you know when we live in a world of deception there's no one greater that's a deceptor and a greater deceiver than himself, Satan himself. You know, the word says that Satan is like a roaring lion out to seek who he can devour. The word also says that he is, his bottom line is to steal, kill, and, uh, and destroy. And so the enemy wants to destroy the hope and peace and joy of people, of God's uh, people. And, uh, you know, he wants to destroy the works of God himself. But God says he's here to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. But there are many right now that are facing many things. I mean, I know people who recently just lost their home to foreclosure, who have been retired and, and have worked long and hard for many years. And all of a sudden, it was one of those suddenly uh, in the wrong, you know, of loss. And, you know, just like David felt, he felt that his adversaries were, uh, you know, he felt that he would be ambushed at any time. And sometimes what we go through, we feel like we've been ambushed, hasn't it? And it seems that uh, there's no real trust with the government or trust with, with those in high places that make uh, major decisions regarding the governorship of this land. And, and, you know, not only that, it seems like we've taken God out of the equation of governorship. And so, 
So many things are happening where people don't trust their their money, you know, and trust uh, their security to no one, and they feel like they have no one. You know, it's gotten so bad where you know many marriages are being broken up, even in the church. Uh, you know, when 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 someone loses hope, when uh, one of God's people loses hope, and we don't stick and stay under uh, and make God our refuge, then we're going to fall out, aren't we? We're going to drop out. And so it's so important that we are constantly uh, seeking God with all our heart, you know, and you know, God says, many are the affliction of the righteous. He said many of the affliction. He didn't say that we wouldn't uh, be troubled. You know, even Jesus said uh, to his disciples uh, prior to going to, to the Father, he said, hey, you know, you'll be troubled much in this world, but take hope in me, for I have overcome it. And we need to understand. And again, let's go, I uh, just want to go back to that one verse. Uh, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. We've got to constantly remember that our hope is in God, is in Christ, and God has a plan. And you know, it seems that the enemy is working overtime right now to begin to discourage people uh, in ways that, uh, that uh, they're losing their faith. And you know, this is where we have need to begin to just stay close to the Lord, encourage one another, and uh, begin to pray for one another. It's really important, you know, don't isolate yourself, because the moment we isolate ourselves, then we leave ourselves open for an attack, for an ambush by the enemy, literally. And he will do everything he can to bring such discouragement that we can't uh, see hope or, or a future. And you know, many have fallen prey to that situation where we've heard in the news where one spouse would, uh, you know, take their own life and, and, and even other extremes where a spouse will take the life of the whole family, including their children, because of hopelessness and because they feel they have nothing and there is no hope for a future. You know, we've gotten to that point where, where the enemy is working overtime. You know, the word says in Ephesians 6 that we come against, not the flesh and blood, but against what? The dark rulers, the dark forces, the authorities of this dark world, of this world. And, you know, there are many that are influenced by the enemy. And that is out to do his bid. And you know, we need to be aware. And God says that we will be aware of the schemes of the enemy. All the more reason that we need to stay close to God. You know, uh, God will keep us and He will deliver us. You know, we need to stay constantly close to God and read His Word so that our spirits are uplifted and are, are fed with the Word, the living Word that brings life to our spirit and causes us to be strong within. Because when we're weak, <laughs> you know, He is strong. So we know that God, and we've been reading, that God's will is a plan, a hope and a future, Jeremiah 29, 11. And you know, these are things that we need to encourage ourselves through the Word of God. You know, when David was, uh, uh, when he had his army and he went out and did a campaign of battles, and then uh, when they came back home, they found that their homes were uh, taken over and, and all their families were kidnapped and taken away by the enemy. And, and so you can imagine what they felt and the loss and the hopelessness to a point that the men were so angry that they were already plotting to, to stone David to death, to kill him. But David went in his tent. And as discouraged as it was, sometimes we need to just bear down and we need to encourage us, encourage ourselves in God. And that's exactly what David did. He encouraged himself. He got into that, into that place with God. He went into that place where he meets God and talks to God. And you know God will be there. 
But you know, sometimes the battle is that we need to push through these things, through these discouragements, through these challenges that we have and not allow our flesh to get in the way, not allow our thoughts of negativeness to come in and and not allow the enemy. And I'll tell you one thing, one thing the enemy wants to do is to uh, distract us and um, redirect our focus on on the things, on the chaos that's going around to discourage us and to a point where we get, we are gripped by fear and doubt and anxiety and, uh, you know, paranoia and the whole works. And if the enemy can keep us there and divert our focus there, and we're not looking to God, but David didn't look at the circumstance. He knew who he needed to go to. You see, we need to know that we have a God that we can go to. God says that he will deliver us from any kind of trouble. You know, and we see that in Psalms 91. And you know, the Lord, it, when David began to encourage himself, all of a sudden his spirit began to grow, uh, to grow strong in him. And before you know it, it was an inner strength that began to give him an outer strength in his attitude and his approach and a new plan. You know, if we stick with God, God will reveal a plan. God has a plan. God has a way out. God has a way of deliverance. His grace uh, is, exudes from the cross of, 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 of Jesus Christ 24-7. And the moment we step in faith, faith positions us in that place of grace. And through grace, we see hope. And by the grace, we will be delivered. And God says in righteousness, those who are righteous before him, he will deliver them out of all their troubles. And you see, that's what's so important. We've got to stay in that place of righteousness. The moment we step out and fall to the snares of the enemy, just like it said in, in Psalm 64, you know, where David says uh, uh, they're trying to, um, uh, they talk about laying snares. You know, we, we've seen this in, the, uh, in life itself and everything that's going on in the finan financial institutions, how they began to uh, strategize and deceitfully make plans behind secret closed doors and, uh, and began, it began to be exposed. In it. You see, but that's what God's going to do. God's going to begin to expose. You know, it reminds me of Habakkuk. If you remember, I, I, I uh, taught a little bit about that. Habakkuk was a prophet who complained to God, why are the wicked advancing? Why are the wicked oppressing the poor? You know, why are the leaders doing this? And aren't you seeing, aren't you seeing what's going on? But then God said something beautiful. He says, hey, hold on. You're going to see something amazing. I'm about to do something. And you know, God's about, is about to turn the tables on those who are, who are playing the game uh, Satan's will of trying to uh, bring oppression into this world and trying to destroy humanity and the hope of humanity and you know God's a faithful God and it's going to take those of us who are in Christ to be the light for those who have who feel they have no hope and you know so let me read what David said in uh, verse 7 he says but God will shoot an unexpected arrow at them, and suddenly shall they be wounded, and they will be made to stumble, their own tongues turning against them. Who will gaze uh, all who gaze upon them will shake their heads and flee away. <laughs> Sometimes the enemy will make things look bigger than they really are. You know when we're in 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 Christ, God always shows a hope. And that's what faith has made. You know, God developed faith through what He has already hoped for us to accomplish in life. And faith will allow us to see the plan, the hope, what God had already hoped to what's to come. You know, and, and so we, God has a new thing for us. But you know, we need to be with God, we need to be under His shadow. Amen. 
So um, know that God has a plan because something unexpectedly will happen. I'm going to tell you something right now. God's about to shoot his arrow on your behalf and something unexpectedly will happen. And then you'll have an experience of a suddenly moment. Suddenly you have a job with more pay than you ever had. Suddenly, your God's restoring you with a new home. Suddenly, God is restoring your peace and your joy. It's restoring your marriages. It's restoring, you know, uh, your children. It's restoring everything back to you. You know, come expecting with God. God has a suddenly moment for you. God is, going about, is about to do something unexpectedly. So we can come expecting that unexpected thing that God's going to do for a suddenly moment. Amen. Well, I hope you've been encouraged by the word and, and uh, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. Uh, please uh, let others know about this broadcast and, and encourage them to listen. And uh, I'm just so thankful for all of you who are supporting this ministry. Even though I'm out of town, in and out, uh, that's why I've got, I've got to leave out of town a couple more times. So I thought I might as well just go and take this month off. But I have several days that I can put some things together. So I wanted to put this little segment together called Suddenly. To just encourage you and to keep going and know that God is for you. Uh, there's no weapon forged against us shall not prosper you know so who can be against us no one Jesus is all for you and God will make a way for a suddenly moment well thank you and God bless and I will talk to you soon bye bye now